Hi, I'm Jasmine Kane, and you're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today on location from the Warwick and Framus World Headquarters, Machneukirchen, Germany, with our special guest, Jasmine Kane. How are you, Jasmine? I'm fabulous. How are you? I am fabulous, too. Maybe even fabulouser than you. Who knows? We'll see. It is now. Awesome. We'll just wait and make those words up. There you go. Uh, boy, it, it's great to, to meet you. I know we've both been coming to the Warwick Base Camp for several years now, and here we are finally sitting down together. You've got a very cool, interesting background. Uh, you're into the, the motorcycles and bass playing. And oh, that's we were talking about Vale Johnson earlier. He's yeah. into motorcycles too, right? I didn't know that. I believe he said he is. And you know what? Tim Bogert from Vanilla Fudge yeah. and Cactus, he's he's into the Harleys and, and the Hogs. And what about you? I, uh, I, I would know one if I saw one. <laughs> and I, I think they're kind of loud. And you know, but. It depends on which one you get. Well, there you, you don't go. have to be loud. Well, should we, should we talk about motorcycles or should we talk about bass? Both. There you go. We should talk about both. Well, I think motorcycles, as I understand it, are. are big part of of who you are and your your upbringing musical and otherwise so why don't you tell the people who you are and give us a little background about your your musical upbringing and you know if you need to work in a motorcycle or two and, and amidst the story go for it what's your story well, I grew up in Sturgis South Dakota which is the home of the world's largest motorcycle rally and this year a rally for the world's largest motorcycle no <laughs> no but that would be a great idea who knows? They might build one. You can have that idea. No charge. I appreciate that. I'm going to pitch that as soon as I get home. <laughs> they, but they have this rally every year, and it started um, in the 30s with just a, a guy that owned an ice house initially, and then when refrigeration came into play, obviously they didn't need an ice house anymore, so they sold their ice house and built and bought a Indian motorcycle dealership. And every year they would invite their friends over for races on their motorcycles, and uh, their group was called the Jack Pine Gypsies. In, in Indian, as in Native American? No. Indian, well, as in. Well, I mean, the the name Indian was it, it can mean Native American. The Native American is their emblem and their logo, but I just meant as, as opposed to American from name. India or from. No, uh, okay. no, not okay. from India. That's what I was clarifying. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> So, anyways, this, this is so much fun. I'm having a blast. Good. The only thing that's missing is like an espresso. I had mine. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way behind. I don't think you need it. But anyway, go on. So, anyway, we just celebrated the 76th anniversary of Sturgis this year. And um, it's I've been involved in the motorcycle industry most of my life. I started performing in bars well before I was of age because in South Dakota you don't have to be 21 to be in bars if you're performing music. You can actually start, um, I'm not sure what the legal age is now, but, but well before uh, 21. How did you become a bass player? Necessity. Uh, I was uh, always in bands with bass players who were getting in trouble. So they weren't showing up, they were getting busted for illegal drugs fleeing the state, hiding, I don't know. So anyways, we decided that if we were probably going to have a functioning band, I was going to have to learn how to play bass because uh, we never could seem to find one that would show up. So it was completely out of necessity. The first time I learned how to play bass was um, in a band with my brothers. We were in a country music band in rural South Dakota. And uh, my older brother quit uh, pretty much overnight and I had 12 hours or so to learn how to play bass by the next day no big deal so it's only four strings how hard can it be yeah it was harder than we thought yeah I sing as well so I front the band and uh, so we did the first show and I hated it and sucked and thought I will never play this instrument again and then a couple years later I was on a music show it was a hillbilly bluegrass music show and the bass player decided suddenly overnight that he wanted to be a saddle bronc rider. So he tried it and broke his leg and was off the show. And I had another 12 hours to learn how to play all the songs on the show. You seem to have a history of being in the right place at the right time. That, some would argue that, but 
I would argue against that. I would call, maybe call it the wrong place at the wrong time. But so I learned all their songs and we got through the season. And as soon as it was over, I decided I probably would never play bass again because it was too much. I think what it was is just too much pressure. You have a few number of hours to learn all this material on an instrument that you weren't really that familiar with. So a few years later, fast forward, I'm in another band and um, their bass player got in trouble for drugs and fled the state. And I had 10 days this time Ooh, to learn 80 songs. An eternity. Yeah, I know. So I was more than ready for that challenge and I learned all their songs. And as soon as I fulfilled the agreements that they had, they fired me. And I decided at that moment that I was gonna learn how to play bass. I was gonna learn how to play bass well and I was going to always be the bass player of my own project because then I never had to worry about what was going to happen with that and who was going to not show up. So I, um, I learned how to play bass. It was super natural for me because I already played rhythm guitar in most all of these bands. And uh, I actually kind of then later fell in love with it. It was kind of like an arranged marriage that eventually you fell in love with the other person. <laughs> and it became very natural for me. And um, now I love it. Now I wouldn't play anything else. Well, good for you. Yeah. Now, I, I fast forward again, I know you're doing some pretty big things, and you've got some honors and distinctions, and your band was voted. What, what was the exact? Uh, we actually just won Nashville Industry Music Awards Alternative Band of the Year, Alternative Rock Band, and um, Artist of the Year. So. And the, I know it's your band, but is it called the Jasmine Kane Band? It's or what? just called Jasmine Kane. It's a okay. solo project. I've had... Um, a revolving door of musicians throughout the years. Some of them stick with me longer than others, but um, always great top-notch musicians. And it's, in Nashville, easy to find because there's a ton of great musicians in Nashville. Well, congratulations on that well-deserved distinction. Tell me about your equipment. I mentioned we're sitting here in Warwick. I know you like Warwick basses. Yep. Tell me about your Warwick basses and why you love them so much. I have eight. I have a Warwick thumb bass, four string, neck through and I uh, that was my first and that was my baby that's when I decided I was gonna play bass professionally uh, that was the first bass I bought and I've had it all these years uh, the next bass I got was a five string version and basically the same thing with a bolt on neck um, my first bass that I got after I signed my endorsement deal with Warwick was a Corvette double buck and shortly after they sent me as a surprise for Christmas a custom that they had built and um, and I played that for quite a while until I just kind of didn't want to take it on the road with me. It, it was way too valuable. So um, we ended up playing one last show with it. It was gonna be my last show and it, the sound company accidentally knocked it off the stage and broke it and I was devastated. <laughs> And, uh, you should write a book of all the things that happened to you throughout your career and coming up. Would you read that book? Yes, I would. Would you? Yes. I'll mark the pages or you probably should skip <laughs> over. <laughs> well, there's so many bases out there. If you have eight Warwick bases, there must be something you really like about Warwick. What is it? Is it about the way, the way they sound, the way they feel, the way they play, all of the above? Actually, I like all of the above. I, I like... Um, I kind of come from an old school way of thinking where it was like a solid chunk of wood is going to sound better. It's it's a heavy, nice, beautiful piece of wood. And the neck throughs I'm a huge fan of because the the sound just vibrates through the entire instrument and you feel it all the way through. It's it's unlike any other bass, even other neck throughs that I've played. They're just built better and they're they're more they're stronger. I can take one bass out on the road on a tour and never have to worry about something going wrong with it and being without. I, I know they're workhorses and I know they're gonna last. And uh, I like the fact that the necks are narrower because I have small fingers. Let's see, look at your fingers. See, look at that. That's an unfair advantage that you've got. So I, have, I am, after all, a guy. Is that unfair? Yes. <laughs> Let's get back to the Warwick basis. <laughs> so, I don't know, I, li I just liked them. The first time I played Warwick, I was used to playing um, Fender jazz and P basses, yeah. and um, I picked up that Warwick and I knew immediately that that was it. I liked the smaller body style, it fit me better. Uh, it wasn't so awkward for me to move around stage with. And I'm a fairly high energy, active performer, so no. I like something that moves around with me. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Look at you, you're like super animated. What do you, when you play, do you? Are you super high energy? You have to check out some of my uh, YouTube videos. 
Yes, I like to get into the music. I like to. I'm from Detroit, so we go like this. You know. How odd. That is the first thing that when I asked a bass player, like I was getting serious about getting into bass, and I said, I want some lessons and instruction mm -hmm. on how to play bass. That was the first thing he told me was exactly what you just did. He said, it doesn't matter what you play or how you play it, but you have to move your neck like this. Okay, that is not exactly what I said, and I think you sort of took my <laughs> comment out of context, but that's cool. Out, that's cool. That's cool. bit because I didn't expect that. I was more of wondering about like stage dives and like jumps and stuff. Do you do that? I, I get into it, especially if I like have the music. You ever stage dive? Now I'm interviewing you. Yeah. Look at this. Listen, when you get your own show and you get your own website, I'd be honored to be your guest. But today, I'll ask the questions. Okay, fine. Tell me about the future. What else do you have coming up? You, you had the award and you had a new record come out, I think, in May. Yes. So you touring to support that record? Yes, we've been on the road uh, all year supporting that record. We actually did some pre-sales last year, and so we've been gearing up for the big release. Um, it got picked up through E1, Sony Music for Sony. Di Digital Distribution. So now uh, they're, we're just out there touring in, in support of that. The future. The future is... Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. I have thought about it. We're actually going to do a music video for our first single, Break Even. And uh, it involves a lot of destruction, which I love. I love to destroy things. So we got a house, like a, a trailer house, and we put a lot of furniture in it. And then we chainsawed it, and we blew up stuff with tannerite, and we shot guns at it, and it was great. And I took an axe to some of those things, and it was super fun. So you've got that to look forward to. That's in the future. Yeah, we, we will all look forward to that, yes. <laughs> and, I mean, other than that, we're just still finishing out our motorcycle tour. Um, and that will continue through November. All right. This may be an obvious question, but what would you be, outside of music, what would you be if you weren't a bass player? I would own a coffee shop coffee shop and then I would uh, and I mean an American version of I that. I think some caffeine would do you good. I would love to have some caffeine right now. They um I, would, I was joking. Talking about the Amsterdam version of coffee shop. I'm talking about the American version of coffee. Okay, good. So anyways, I would like to have a coffee shop and then I would also like it to be like coffee shop on one side and a bar on the other cuz I really like um craft beers. Okay. Craft well, with an F. Not like crap beers but craft beers i heard you okay. but thank you for clarifying i just had to make sure you well this has been fun i wish we had more time but we do need to wrap it up <laughs> jasmine kane congratulations well, on the you. honors the distinctions the record the tour the music the motorcycles everything else great stories i have a feeling there are a lot more that we, we may not have even touched the surface so yeah, it's not a, it hasn't even begun so maybe we'll do a follow-up get that coffee and then i'll be back maybe we'll do a we'll, we'll set up a follow-up interview all right, all right. I, I think the audience would like that <laughs> <laughs> with the one and only jasmine kane on location from the Framus and Warwick World Headquarters, Mark Neukirchen, Germany. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.